Hello, MJ7NLK here and welcome back to the channel. If you're already a subscriber then I would like to thank you for your continued support, and if not then please click the subscribe button as it really does help the channel out. I apologise for the lack of content so far this year, I have been exceptionally busy and just haven't had the time to be able to get back into the studio. In this video I am looking again at the Bill 2 and investigating expandability and attempting to answer various questions I have received since making the original video. One question I get asked a lot is, are the European models of President Radios different to the FCC models sold in North America? I do not have any FCC versions of the radio so I'm not able to advise on the differences between them, however I have been told by some viewers that the FCC models have been restricted and do not have the same functionality as the European versions. Let's quickly get the disclaimer out of the way. Modifying a radio is at your own risk. You will have legal obligations in your region with regards to transmissions, licensing and power outputs. You should always ensure that you are not causing a nuisance and more importantly not causing any radio interference or distress to others. <sighs> Please do not break the law in your region. Well here we are again with the President Bill 2. In my last video I showed you how to expand the radio which increased the power output to 15 watts, but we did not get a high power mode in the factory services menu, so were unable to make any adjustments to the high power option. There is another modification that can be performed to the Bill 2, but this involves soldering a wire to bridge two points on the PCB. Sounds simple right? Well, wrong. This thing is tiny and in order to access the relevant section on the board to perform the modification, you really should remove it. We are going to need to desolder the antenna connector and detach the VRMs from the case as it's used as a heatsink. The front of the radio does detach from the body, but this does not help us access what we need. So let's make a start and get on with the disassembly. So as before you need a Torx T8H in order to remove the bolts that hold down the underside cover. So let's get those removed. So now that that's removed we can remove the speaker connector. Just be careful when removing this that you don't pull the socket off the board which can happen. And now we need to remove the normal screws which hold the faceplate on. And the faceplate comes away quite easily. Next we're going to remove the ribbon cable here. And I've just noticed that we have two USB, the cables or the power cables for the USB socket uh, are soldered onto the board, so I won't go any further with the face here. So next we need to undo the two screws that hold the VRM to the board. Let's get those removed. Now there is a little nylon washer that's on that first one, so we'll need to make sure that we don't lose that. And then the next, let's get that removed. Which also appears to have some sort of nylon washer. And that's more like a little plug. So we'll get that one out the way. Now with all of these VRMs and things, they, uh, they dissipate heat in the regulation of the uh, power supply or the voltage that's required. Um, so it will have heat sink compound on it, um, which just gets everywhere. So uh, just be prepared for that. Now I don't know if you can see 
the antenna, the uh, SO239 socket, that is actually soldered to the board. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit on that. So that is here and it has one little foot that lifts and then this bracket is soldered to the top. So in order to get that out, we're going to have to desolder it. So I'll get on with that now. Well, that wasn't fun at all. And the case itself um, has heatsink compound in various places uh, here, 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 and here. And they line up with the bottom of the board to obviously dissipate the heat from those components. So now that we're in a position to put this back together, it's uh, very important to make sure that you put some fresh heat sink compound on. Uh, I have just added some extra on top of the stuff that they already have to ensure that we have enough covering the components to dissipate the heat. Um, I've not used expensive stuff here, I've just used a sort of general heat sink compound. So let's, uh, let's start to put the thing back together.
that was about as much fun as a prostate exam, but there we are. The uh, the problems I was having is I had to I had to break out my soldering iron tips because the tip I usually use, uh, which is this one, um, just I just couldn't get enough heat into it, and even this sort of conical one here. Uh, I still couldn't get enough heat into it with that one either. So I uh, ended up using a pretty big chisel bit, which now should hopefully have cooled down enough to be able to swap. Um, swap it back for my preferred bit. And then we're ready to go again on that one. And uh, ended up having to use this one here, I don't know if that's going to focus very well, in order to get enough heat into the uh, connector here to desolder. So let's, let's jiggle the camera around and plug it in and let's see what's happened. So the bill two. What does the blue wire do? So could be any color wire really but adding the blue wire to the second position has done absolutely nothing um, with the radio in expanded mode if we turn it on it's on channel 9 at the moment let me so that's channel 20 FM inbound block A on the radio screen. So we have the jumper jumped, we have the blue wire added and the white wire desoldered. We were getting 15 watts before in this mode and let's uh, key up and we're getting 15 watts again. So adding the or jumping the jumper, cutting the white wire and then adding a blue wire in the next position and bridging that gap uh, doesn't do anything at all that I can see. I've gone into the factory services menu and we only still have a power low option. I was hoping for a uh, P2 mode so that we could control the high power in the high power mode and dial it back to four watts. My preference is to have a radio that's easily expandable in the case of an emergency. And really I want to be running this radio at four watts. Um, but I don't want to have to open it up and start soldering stuff uh, should that emergency event occur. So uh, I don't know where we go from here. I've tried a few other bits and pieces and I'll attempt to uh, to get these in place. So placing the power meter on either side of the white wire, we can see there's a continual two and a half volts going over that line. If we turn the radio off, that drops, and then turning the radio back on, that's back up to two and a half watts, uh, two and a half volts, and the radio is still in expanded mode. So even if I um, bridged the white wire, and I did try that with this white wire, bridging that and having both of them bridged, um, that still did not make any difference. So I don't think the Bill 2 has a, a P2 menu in the factory services menu and uh, I was hoping that that would be enabled by uh, adding the blue wire. And let's, let's just see what happens if I can get the key combination correct. So into the factory services menu we have, let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. So we have um, power low, FM, AL, software version, and back to PL. And in the PL power low mode, um, we're outputting the maximum value there, um, which is about five watts. Uh, in its fully adjusted uh, power low position. We do not get a P2 option so that we can dial back the modified power state. If I turn the radio back on, we're in TS, 
Let me jump out a bit so you can see the old bird. And then if we key up here, we're at the uh, 15 watt mark as we were before. So the blue wire, don't know what that does and it doesn't seem to have any effect. Now with president radios generally when they have a line between them on the PCB that usually means that you bridge it and if the um, the two wires have a square box around them then that means a sticker 1k resistor in line. Um, so as this has a single line that is what we've done but uh, it doesn't seem to have had any impact. So if you know anything else about the Bill 2, I'm quite happy for this Bill 2 to be the sacrificial lamb. Uh, I will get another one for the collection, but this one can be modified um, and we can try different things on it. So if you have any further thoughts on how we can control that high power option, um, if you've uh, got the service manual, and you can provide a bit of additional information, then I can certainly try that on this particular radio. Well, I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, then please help the channel out by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. This really does help and ensures that I can continue to provide content. Please feel free to buy me a coffee, details are in the description below, and if you have any questions or comments, then you know what to do in the comments section below. All I ask is that you keep it respectful, nasty know-it-alls need not apply. Until next time, stay safe, stay happy, and catch you in the next one.